already fed you, kitty. Do this thing. I didn't use the stars by like 7 in the morning. Because I can hear my daughter's alarm clock a lot. She gets her son ready for nursery school. I'm going to set my daily routine. Go out collecting my empties. Usually just pay for my basic needs. Like lunch, cigarettes, and beer. Like, I'm kind of like a good Samaritan guy. I take in the homeless people and that. I put them up. And eventually, it backfires on me, and you know, like they often feel like uh, you know, they, they walk all over me, take advantage of my kindness and whatnot. Eh? And a lot of them were just a bunch of riffraff. Damage my house, put holes in the walls, break windows, and shit like that. You know, it's a broken window from one of my former tenants. Yeah, some of the people I helped out in my life really didn't appreciate my kindness. I feel like kind of used by them. I'm like a, a wall mat. Like they walked all over me. A wall mat. A doormat. A doormat. <laughs> okay, let's take that back. <laughs> Race that part. <laughs> Let's go. Get, 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 get. Okay. Hey, Mario, Here's your breakfast. Hey, Chow down. Clint. And here's my daily breakfast. Good morning. How are you? Yeah, I usually start off my day like this. Part of my daily routine. I'm trying to trying to cut back a little bit because of health reasons but gotta do my job it's the only job I got left say hi to you you skunky dog you sure like skunks a lot I started collecting the, through the reserves about uh, 9 10 years old just to make my uh, Munchy money, I'd, I'd uh, collect enough to go down to this uh, restaurant called the Sugar Bowl and have my favorite drink, which was a, a float, eh? Orange crust float with ice cream in it and a hamburger and fries. And I used to make, when, when I started that, I used to make like um, maybe $20 a day. And being that small, it sure was heavy to carry all those beer bottles because there was no cans then. Like I said, I lived here for 10 years. I mean, I'm not really homeless or anything, but I uh, can't be in the workforce anymore because of uh, my, my health and whatnot. And I'm trying to get onto a disability assistance from the social development. But, you know, like, I still like what I do because I'm helping Mother Nature. And bottle collectors are kind of like a small part of Mother Nature's army, you know, trying to help keep, keep the environment clean and whatnot. Native people grew up loving the forest and, you know, and not uh, over abusing anything. You know, like they used to, uh, go five miles apart to take slabs off cedar trees to make the long houses that we lived in. And it was multi-generational homes and it, they, were, they were like mansions. Five generations in one house. You know, but they wouldn't uh, rape the forest. They, they'd use everything out of a cedar tree, like make canoes, use the bark to make the clothing, and use the wood to make houses. And they wouldn't waste anything. They even used the roots of the cedar tree to weave baskets and whatnot. And that was pretty cool. And I wish I was, I was there. 
and so I kind of felt robbed of my culture because you know, uh, it was actually a cultural genocide that, that the Europeans were putting upon the natives. And you know, they were trying to eliminate the natives at one point. They brought over a whole bunch of blankets from England and they offered them to the natives to trade for their goods. And apparently the blankets are all infested with things like smallpox, chicken pox, and whatnot. And so by the time uh, my, my great-great-great-grandfather got to Canada, there, there was only 1,200 Squamish Nation members left because they were all dying off due to those diseases. And uh, my ancestry, I'm, I'm half South American and half North American, Indian. But uh, the Spaniards didn't, didn't understand uh, the, the Mapuche tribe's language, so they gave them Spanish names. That's why my last name's Gonzalez. And they, they took uh, 28 Chilean Indians all, all the ones that were good with uh, woodwork to uh, repair their, their masts during storms and whatnot, they'd anchor up and send the Indians to make, make new masts out of, out of the, the trees and whatnot. And when they got to the port of Vancouver, the 28 natives seen canoes on, on the beach in North Vancouver here, and they all jumped ship. And Squamish Nation adopted the men because they were short of men. So the 28 natives helped repopulate the Squamish Nation. Now, they were down to 1,200. Now we stand at uh, 3,500. And we're growing by, by the year. It's pretty neat. I mean, I'm proud of my ancestry. You know, you know like, I can go back seven generations. But I, one day, I want to make it down to to uh, Chile, where the Mapuche tribe lives, and find out that broken, broken uh, branch of my family tree, and I want I want to kind of fill it in, so that I could share it with with my children, my grandchildren. You know what the best sound in the world is? To the alcoholic, it's like that. <laughs> yeah, best sound in the world. Yeah. You start, start my routine. I clean up the empties in my yard and do my neighborhood. But I'm going to skip the neighborhood today because I done it yesterday. And it's all cleaned up. So I'll just do my yard and then I'll work my way towards uh, central North Van. I've got, I've got a regular route around here in North Van. And there's people in the houses up there that save their empties for me and whatnot. And I usually have enough for my barley sandwiches by the time I clean up this res. You know? But today is good day. Sun's out, everything's wonderful. We had a little bit of a party last night. I got empties back here, right? Yeah, my grandson's toys are back there too. Even his little chair. See that little yellow chair? He sits in that thing. Yeah. It's wonderful being a grandparent. And the big boss down here that, that contracts out the, the movers, he always appreciates uh, Things I do around here, like clean up all their empties and throw, throw away all their boxes, and empty beer boxes. And this is just part of my daily routine. Well, this place is usually a good place to get a lot of cash, especially on Wednesdays, because that's for pennies. This is a bag. This is a ten dollar bag here. Ten dollars. You fill that up. $10. Fill it right up to the hilt. Ten dollars. Right away. Yeah. Yeah.
money for it? I don't know. Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah, I'm there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's one of my cousins. They always give me, they always give me their empty seat. And I just got one more house down here to hit right across the street and we'll get another load there and then we'll be all set. Okay? All right? We'll be load up in New York minute. Yeah. Yeah, that was a bad accident. Four Street Hill. And a buggy flipping. Wow, oh, what a hard landing. And what happened to your wrist? It actually was separated from your radius and all yeah, I broke I broke my fall like that, and both sides, both bones were separated from my hand. Eh? My hand was just dangling there, eh? and so I had to spend 12 hours, get an operation, get some pins in. Now I'm waiting a goddamn another four weeks, and get a full cast on, and I gotta wait another six weeks. Yeah. Now yeah, I'll tell you what happened, my brother. Okay. Do you want to go to? You don't mind? I take my shirt off, eh? That's up to you. Hey, this is all about collecting cans, though, too. I know, I know. Yeah, That's what Garris was great. doing when he got smoked, man. Oh. He died okay. that way. I don't know what kind of yeah. these guys on. He died that way. My brother, my brother is coming from here. This is his house. And he's, he's, he's got a car yeah. full. Yeah. He's got a car full of empties. Yeah. And it, we got a trail. It goes all the way down there, right? Eh? And we pull up over there towards the Bottle Depot. Bottle Depot is only right behind Walmart, eh? And he's at he's at Home Depot at a crosswalk, pushing his buggy. He's going across the street, and it just gets the other end, just gets the other end, and gets smoked. And oh damn, man! He went 25 meters. His skull cap was already gone, man. And he lived for six hours after that. Like, my brother, my older brother, my, no, my younger brother, come pick me up. He says, hey, our brother's dying in the hospital right now. I says, I can't watch it. I can't watch it, man, because it's just too sad, man. This old buggy scattered all over the road, all these empties, and he's 25 meters up the road with a broken skull cap, right? His brain's exposed and everything. He thought he was in the hospital for five minutes. You know? And he was there for six hours. And finally they pulled the plug. And damn. Saddest life. Saddest day of my life, man. I hate it, man. You know? It's because we're troopers. We're troopers. We had a hard, bloody life. Growing up with the goddamn religion shit and everything like that. And, you know, we grind every day, you know, collecting empties, left and right and all that. You know, just, it's artificial painkiller. Artificial painkiller, that's all it is, hey? Artificial painkiller, right? Hell yeah. This is all reserve, eh? This is our cemetery. And see down below? Right there, down below, that's where my brother, that's where my brother's buried. He's buried right next door to my dad. There's my dad, my brother, my uncle, and my mother. And I don't want to see anybody else. As long as I live long enough. You know? I'm going to try my best. I'm going to try my best, you know, to keep coping. I'm trying to get now positive coping skills instead of negative coping skills, you know? Man, shit, I try really hard every day of my life. I raised three kids for 18 years of my life. I quit drinking for like nine years straight, eh? Just to make sure they got a good, proper education, all that. And they all turned out successful. And then, you know, like, my daughter had a grandchild. And the welfare showed up, got them try to rip off the grandchild. I went to jail for it. Just because I was defending my house, hey. I smoked a fucking RCMP, hey. Boom, with a steel bar. And I, I had a year's probation, 
sympathy letter, I mean, palsy letter, whatever you call it, and had to do all this other bloody road work, and they wanted me to go to treatment and all that shit and all that shit, but hell, why should I quit drinking when they're still killing me? You know? Why should I do that? Hell, no, there's my nephews. Look at their house. Hey, they're trying to rebuild it. They're trying to rebuild it. Hey, that's my late brother's house, you know? They're really trying to, trying their very best to rebuild it. They do native artwork, hey? Okay? Carve every day, go out and sell it, buy materials, you know, try to get it a little bit better and all that and whatnot. You know, I don't even know if they have electricity, man. Yeah, shit. It's goddamn weird. I never give up on my kids, because I, I got four kids, eh? I got six grandchildren. I'm 51 years old. Yeah, I don't want to give them all up. No way, man. Love them too much. Put too much of my life into them, right? Hell yeah. We're just down here. You know what they wanted to do? They wanted to buy our cemetery and, and bury it over and make a goddamn landfill, you know? Goddamn government and all that. That's what the hell with that. No way, man. Okay. Here it is. Let's go over here. Okay. This is my dad. This is my dad right here. Right? And that's my younger brother, Gareth. He just turned 49. That's the one that got smoked with the, with the, the buggy crossing the road. My auntie's right here. My uncle didn't die. They, they got a gift. They got a gift grave you know, to, to uh, be buried. That's side by side. And this is my cousin, Cabello. And my mom. Where are you, mom? Mom should be close by, man. That's her inherited name, eh? Norma Cecilia Gonzalez Nee Campbell. November 22nd. 1928. Man, my daughter, one of my daughters looks exactly like her, man. And guess what? If I die, I got it written down. I got to be cremated. I want to lay next to her, eh? They'll dig a hole, put a box in there, put me next to her, right? Hell yeah. But this is my mommy. Her name's Norma. My best friend. Don't stop walking. Don't stop walking. As soon as you stop walking, you die. Oh, that's right, man. You stop walking, you die. You get locked in grief. You get in a pendulum, man. You're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, you know. You're going through anger and everything and all that shit, you know. Like, there's so many, there's so many stages. It's just like a clock, eh? Grief's just like a clock. It's full circle, right? Full circle. But I never reach the other end because I always run into somebody that reminds me of my late one, right? Somebody reminds me of my late one, and oh, it brings it all back again. And what do I do, right? What do I do? Hell, man. I work hard. I mean, like, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't employable. I ain't employable. All I do is goddamn recycle, keep 
keep Mother Nature clean, recycle every day, right? You know? A bee tried to zap me just a little while ago. I just gave him a head by the way. his way. You know, like when I was doing Vancouver, the scariest thing for me was like digging in the bins and running into open needles. You know, and then some people down there are so addicted to drugs and all that. They don't put the cash back on the needles. And one day I got poked and I got scared as hell. Because you don't know what you're going to get from it, eh? You could get hep C, you could get HIV or whatever. I got poked and I looked at it and I seen the rig. I pulled the rig out of, out of the bin, put it on the ground and just stomped it. It just crushed it flat as can be. And I was swearing at myself for doing that because I didn't have gloves on. And I had, I had a needle poke in my thumb and it was bleeding. And you know how men are. They're really brave, except when it comes to their own health. They won't go see a doctor to go see what's checked up on them. Uh, and that's the scary part of breathing that. Hopefully I answered most of the questions. It's tomorrow I probably want to answer like one or two. <laughs> I'm glad you appreciate the history. Yeah, doing bottle collecting, I mean, like, we're joining an army, and it's like Mother Nature's army, because all we're doing is trying to keep the environment clean, because uh, there's so many polluters in the world that you'd find. And, you know, bottle collecting is just one small part of trying to help Mother Nature heal.